Jai Baba. Okay, now I will introduce my uh, family over here. To the right of me is uh, Mummy, Manu Keravala, and uh, Jai Baba. And to my left is Uncle Jami Mama. Uh, Jai Baba. And here is uh, Roshan. Jai Baba. And uh, Dolly. Jai Baba. And this is Mera over here. Jai Baba. Jai Baba. Now, regards beloved Baba's uh, stories and all that, I'll narrate one story which uh, shows beloved Baba's sense of humor. This was in 1954, and beloved Baba called me at Satara. And one morning while sitting along with the Manli, beloved Baba said uh, to me, Do you know me? I said, Of course I know you. And beloved Baba then told me that, uh, Well, these people have spent their lifetime at, at, my, at my feet, and they don't know me, and you seem to know me within a very short time. So I said, No, Baba, it's not that way I know you. I know you that uh, you are Mare Baba, and that we love and worship you as God. This is uh, one of the incidences I remember where Baba's sense of humor was there. Another occasion I remember is uh, Savas of 1954. And I remember one uh, Kaval, a gentleman singing Indian music, mostly in Urdu language. And he was singing a couplet which said that unless and until you can satisfy this thirst which is in me, don't call yourself uh, so uh, magnanimous or uh, your heart is as big as an ocean. And he kept on repeating these lines to beloved Baba. It so happened that this Kaval was singing this particular portion at about three in the afternoon. And in, in India, this is the time when people normally have their afternoon tea. And two blokes were already serving tea to the people sitting at beloved Baba's feet. And one chap reached this man just about that time. And beloved Baba indicated to the man carrying the kettle giving me a double helping of tea. He seems to be extraordinarily thirsty this afternoon. This was another incident I remember. Regards uh, beloved Baba's uh, orders and all that, uh, when I first came back from England, beloved Baba called me to Satara and he asked me as to how my life on the ship was. I told him that uh, I had lived just an average life like all seamen having a good time in various ports and whatnot. And then Beloved Baba said to me that, uh, fair enough, but from now on you must behave yourself and always remember and love him and try to live as good a life as possible. I have known Baba for the last uh, 41 years. Actually, I came in contact uh, of Baba through my mother's family. My mother's family is from Ahmednagar and they have known Baba from the time he came and settled down at Mehrabad. And if I'm not mistaken, my uncles and my aunts have even come in contact with Baba at the time when he had not started with his silence. Uh, by profession, I am a merchant seaman and I left India at the age of 19 and came back again at the age of about 23, 24, which was in 1954. And on that occasion, Baba called me at Satara. Baba asked me as to how I had spent my time at sea. And I told him that uh, I had lived a life uh, which was very typical of uh, most of the sailors. And he asked me whether uh, I used to smoke and all that. And he said that uh, I, he asked me these things. I said, yes, Baba, I have done all these things. Then beloved Baba told me that uh, I should stop doing these things because uh, for one who had come in contact with Baba it was not good to behave like that and then Baba gave me as an example rather Baba asked one of the Manlis to explain to me uh, what it meant and he said that uh, certain scars were so thick and their impressions were so deep that even if a perfect master were to wipe them out, they would still remain in a very sort of translucent or a vague form. Something like uh, certain stains which fall on your clothes. They can be washed off, but if you held that particular material in the light, you could still see the stains present there. Something similar happens with uh, sauskas pertaining to, say, sex and things like that, where uh, 
it is at and at, it is entirely on the sort of uh, you know just uh, the level of lust or things like that i remember another incident with baba and this took place at ganeshkan though i don't remember the year when it uh, occurred i was at ganeshkan in pune and baba lover named gadekar and his family came for his darshan there were mr gadekar his wife his son and his daughter after the normal beginning baba asked as to how their health and all that was mrs gadekar told baba that at that particular year she was going to stand for elections and her son who had just completed his msc was trying to get some scholarship for further studies in usa she also told baba that her daughter nalini was about to get married baba jokingly turned to mr gadekar and said well very soon it seems your wife will be joining political affairs your son will be going to america daughter is getting married that leaves you all alone so why not you come and stay with me then would you like that and gadekar said of course i would be very happy after that uh, shortly after that i left uh, again for my job at sea and about a month or two later i received a letter from my family informing me that mr gadekar had left us in the sense that he had dropped his body and was with beloved baba and it suddenly struck me that that was what baba meant when he told gadekar that uh, after everything is over why not you come to me and the period stipulated was exactly the time which baba had indicated to him about 2 months after that incident another incident which took place in my own life was in the year 1968 but the actual beginning of it was in october of 1967 baba was in very strict seclusion that time but he called my mother gai mai my cousin erich's mummy and me at merazad and on that occasion baba told me that i should send him a telegram informing him as to where i would be or where rather my ship would be near about the period february 21 1968 and he insisted that i must under any circumstances advise him of this a few days before that date baba also told me that now i have sent a circular advising all my lovers all over that no telegrams or correspondence should be maintained with him but for that particular period of february 21 this did not apply to me and i must inform him as to where i would be about that time shortly after that if i'm not mistaken it was uh, the 6th of february 1968 i flew to cairo egypt and from there to alexandria to join my ship which was there about uh, 12th of uh, that same month february we sailed for dakar in senegal republic and it was about 12 days after leaving egypt when we are just about uh, near gibraltar and turning the corner that our ship ran aground near casablanca this was about 8:30 in the morning february 22 1968 of course about 18 february i had already advised baba where i would be by telegram and we were on the rocks for about 12 hours and the ship took a very horrible beating that time about 8:30 in the night when there was high tide the ship refloated and we slowly limped into casablanca and took shelter there when the ship was examined for damages we found that a lot of uh, plates had been completely ripped open and according to government surveyors who examined the ship they said it was sheer miracle that the ship ever floated again and that uh, she could come on her own power to casablanca i realized that time that this was what baba was aiming about that this particular experience had to be taken and i should inform him about it and deep within me i felt that uh, baba had again uh, uh yes i would say that it was a miracle that it was a miracle and that baba had once told me that uh, wherever i would be he would always be with me and i felt that his presence was there with me again these are the few incidences which i recollect at present jai baba uh roshan would you like to say something now mm. 
when once I was with Baba in Ganeshkin and he had come to see us. Most probably Baba used to come to our house whenever he was in Pune, like one of our family members. And we are so close and we liked Baba so much that we used to tell each and everything to Baba as our father. And once when my little dot Dolly was very ill in Pune, Baba has said not to worry about her. She was in the hospital for 40 days and her eyes were shut for nearly 21 days and we did not have any hopes of her, her seeing it after that. But by Baba's, she was only a year old child when she was so severely ill with smallpox. So now she has become big and Baba once told me that she is going to live for my work and I think it is that she will do Baba's work when she grows big enough for that. Here is little Dolly. Jai Baba. Now she is going to the school and she is in fifth grade. And this is little elder daughter, baby Mera, who is also Baba's pet. When she was small, Baba used to come to Bindra house very often to play with her. And Francis Brabazon used to be very, very jealous of her when Baba used to give her drinks or take her in his lap. He used to say, how lucky this child is. I feel jealous of this child. And Baba used to say, this child will do a lot of work for me and I pray that she will do what Baba wished her to do. Now this elder daughter is in eighth grade and I think she will like to speak about Baba to you all. Jai Baba. Jai Baba. Uh, I am, my, anyway, Sam's elder daughter and well, what must I say? You must tell about your sea experience. What is my sea experience? I met Baba when I was exactly a day old. And <laughs> anyway, the I don't know because but my mommy told me so. And um, one once yes, mommy. Since you have recollected, since you can. Uh, once, uh, I don't know whether it is a dream or not, but I I saw. A Baba coming coming to my bed. I don't know, but I was very small then. But I don't think it's a dream, because well, I saw him there, and I distinctly remember seeing myself as a baby also. So, well, I don't know whether it was a dream, but it must have been because I can't see myself as a baby. So, now, uh, now what must I say, Daddy? I had my church ceremony done in Guru Prasad and um, a Baba gave me a picture and and a, a silver, and yes, and the picture is right there in the corner and um, he, yes, and Baba told me that uh, he, he, he prayed to our Mazda Zoroaster and mentioned his name also, he said, May our Mazda Zoroaster and Mayor Baba help you to get rid of all superficial ceremonies. And I must say I have because, you see, uh, we, we have to wear the Sadra and Kasti. And I got fed up of it, so I took it off. And I get a lot of teasing about it from the girls in school, especially those who are Parsis. But, you see, it is quite uh, easy to take it as teasing if you know how. And... Anyway, that is got rid of all the superficial ceremonies that I remember having. Um, um, once when I was very small, 
Baba was sitting and talking to my auntie and uh, un uh, auntie and Mera auntie and all were there. And uh, he was sitting in the room where in Guru Prasad where Mera auntie used to sleep. So at least children were not allowed and I was told to stay with my uncle. And I wanted my auntie because I wanted a drink of water very badly. So I, I, went, I went looking and I just peeped into the door and Baba saw me and he called me in. And you should have seen how bad I felt. I went and I hid my face in my auntie's lap and I wouldn't see anyone. So uh, Baba said she's looking like the fox has gone in the ditch. So uh, anyway, the next day when we went for darshan, he said since she wouldn't see me yesterday, I will not see her today. And before he, I went home in the afternoon, he gave me an order that whenever I went to see him, I must see him as soon as I come in and uh, before I go home. So, and, and I, I think I followed the order perfectly well all the time I saw him. Then, mm, but anyway, I used to get very angry with Baba for humiliating me before all those people then, but I find mm, that I was in the wrong. I shouldn't have hidden my face like that. But I was very angry that day because you see, my auntie and my friends and all were sitting there. And anyway, I was a tiny tot then. But now what can I say? I don't know. <laughs> now, what must I say now? Yeah. I, I, I used to say Baba's prayers since I... Ah, uh, yes. Once when I was small, Baba used to tell me very often, say the prayers, say the prayers, which I never used to say. It. Then one day everyone was, uh, had gone home and me and my auntie and mm, my sister were sitting there. And then I don't think you should mind saying the prayers. Why don't you? So I said, all right, I will say it. And I said the Parvadigar and the repentance prayer, but in any way it was all a mixture. And I wouldn't have said it if it weren't for the sweets on the table. And Baba said, if you say the prayers, I'll give you all the sweets. So I said the prayers and he gave me the sweets. And I took them home and put them in the... There is a place in sort of a closet and I put them there. And um, uh, my servant, you know, she came and ate them all, uh, most of them up. So I told Baba the next day that I never ate in one of the sweets. I had to give uh, most of them away. And then whatever was remaining for myself, the servant ate it up. So he said, never mind, I'll give you some more. And he gave me almost twice the amount I had the other day. So uh, that was, that was once. But, mm -mm. mommy? Ah, uh -uh. uh, when, when we used to go to Merazad, I used to take a sweet box with me. So once I took the sweets to Baba and I offered him one. So then he also used to have sweet boxes next to him to give to any child or any person, you know, like his prasad. So I went there and I offered him my sweets as if I was the host and he the guest. So he took a sweet, you know, very, and said thank you and all. And then he opened his box and offered me the sweets. So I took one. So he gave me another handful and he said, give them to everyone at home. And uh, my uncle, he took away the papers from me and I think he has them pressed in a book somewhere. I don't know exactly, but I think he has them. Hmm? Ah, yes. Uh, <laughs> we went to see Baba one day and Baba called for Mastan. <laughs> and uh, he, you know, he put him on the bed and uh, was you know, petting him and caressing him and all. So I got... I got very angry. I was sitting on Guy Auntie's lap, that is Era Chanka's mother. And I got very angry. And uh, I started scratching at my granny's hand. So Baba is saying, what has happened? Why is she ang so angry? And so um, my granny said, oh, she, she doesn't like Mastan sitting next to you. So uh, he, he made Mastan get up and said, now you come and sit next to me. Uh, anyway, so he sent Mastan away, but every time I used to go to play with Mastan after Baba dropped his body, Era Chankal used to always say, it's a wonder you are such great friends with him after the way you scratched your granny about Baba petting him. And uh, everyone in the Mandli yet teases me if they remember. Um, <laughs> ah, yes, I cried like anything. Mm -hmm. Jai Baba.
Sam? Yes, please. All right. You tell us a little bit now about some of the times when you visited Guru Prasad and perhaps Baba asked you about your sea adventures and just what you had to tell Baba and what he said to you. Yes. Dharma, there is a there are many occasions when uh, Baba yes many occasions when uh, at Guru Prasad and in Ganeshkind also when Baba would ask me about my life at sea and one thing about Baba was that uh, he always had a very practical outlook towards everything and uh, he used to say that uh, uh, even things like drinks well he said if you had uh, drank in moderation there was nothing wrong in it and he said that till the time you didn't get attached to a particular item there was no harm if you sort of indulged in that thing that was Baba's way of doing it another occasion I remember was that uh, Baba had just come from Mahableshwa and uh, that time I had one still camera with me and Baba had, uh, Mandli had taken that camera along to take Baba's picture there and uh, a few of the a few uh, shots were taken at Mableshwar, though the entire spool was not utilized. When Baba came to Pune, the Bandli was eager to have that particular spool uh, uh, developed. And Baba said that, uh, well, anyway, we'll have to wait till the spool got over. I said, uh, to ba I said to Baba that there was no need for that. If the Bandli was in a hurry, we could get the whole thing developed right away. Then Baba said, what would happen to the ones that were not exposed? I said, never mind, Baba, that's all right. And Baba said, well, it looks like you're a millionaire or something, that you want to waste things like that. I said, no, Baba, for you, I mean, it's all right. But Baba would not like the things done that way. And he said, no. Sam, uh, being that your mother only speaks uh, Gujarati, I understand she has a lot of good experiences with, with, with Baba. And I would like you to interpret a, a couple of her stories from Gujarati into English. As I just told you in the beginning of this interview, Mummy and her brothers came in contact with Baba when they were real small. They were, I think, uh, about the age of, uh, say, nine, ten, like that. And Mummy now told me about one incident which took place in 1925. They all had gone to Mehrabad. Mummy's family incidentally comes from Ahmednagar itself. And when Baba first came and settled down in Ahmednagar, they would regularly go to Mehrabad and have his darshan. On one such occasion when Mummy and her brothers and sisters went for Baba's darshan, it was very cloudy that day. And it was getting late in the evening. And being small children, they were worried about getting back home. So eventually they asked Baba if they could leave now as it was getting cloudy and they would like to be home before it started raining. It seems on that particular occasion, Baba was sitting outside in the open at Merabad, and there was a small uh, utensil close by with him, a small jug-like thing made of metal, and this jug was full of water. Baba suddenly picked up that jug and hurled it outside in the open. And in, very soon after that, the entire atmosphere, which was very cloudy, began to clear up and sun started shining and all. And Baba said that now all of you youngsters run off home before it would rain. And the whole family reached their house very safely and the rains uh, started uh, about shortly after that. This is one incident which Mummy remembers in, 1920, in 1925. Another incident she told me was about uh, a certain driver of a truck. He had been instructed by Baba to be present at Mehrabad at 9 in the morning. It seems on that Oh, I'm sorry. It was 9 in the night. And Mummy and her brothers and sisters were all there. And, uh, excuse me, were they so? Uh, this driver in the truck was to take the family back home from Mehrabad. And Baba was waiting for this driver to come at 9 o'clock. Well, it was well past 9 and the truck didn't come, neither the driver came and Baba was walking up and down in the room, rubbing his hands, at the same time telling all these kids uh, sitting around them that the driver was real lucky because today Baba would be punishing him for disobeying his orders. And 10 or 15 minutes later, well past 9, when this driver came to Merabad, 
first thing that Baba asked him was why he was late. And when the driver could not give a proper accounting of his movements, Baba gave him a tight slap and told the driver that he was real lucky that Baba had slapped him. Otherwise, if uh, things had gone according to the normal uh, routine, maybe the punishment would have been more severe. I don't know. It is just my guess in this. Another incident which Mummy remembers was in the year 1929, and this took place at Nagpur. At Nagpur, Gai Mamma used to stay there. Gai Mamma happens to be Erich's mummy, and the family was at Nagpur that time. My elder brother Dadi, who is at present in Bushavel, was very small, must be about a couple of months uh, old, and he was running a very high temperature at that time. And Gai Mamma was sitting there near his bedside and with a bag of ice water on his head, trying to bring the temperature down. It so happened that uh, Gai Mama was uh, with Dadi for a long time and she had to go for relief. And there was no one to take over this uh, ice water bag. And she did not know how to uh, leave Dadi alone like that. When suddenly she heard a knock on the door. When she opened the door, Baba was there at the door and he said, now run off and get, uh, relieve yourself. In the meantime, I will look after Daddy. And thus Gai Mama then went and relieved herself and came back. These are the incidences which my mummy just told me about. Uh, and Gai Mama was of course very much surprised as to how Baba came there at that late hour of the night. Uh, okay. Stop. Well, Jai Baba to all our Jai Baba. Jai Baba to all our lovers in all the various parts of the world, and we wish your uh, venture a real grand success, which it deserves. Jai Baba to you also. Jai Mer Baba ki Jai. Avatar Mer Baba ki Jai. Avatar Mer Baba ki Jai.